Right here in front of me are the latest additions to my carnivorous plants nursery. These are native Australian carnivorous plants and I can't wait to share them with you. Okay, so these are the native Australian carnivorous plants. I've got them covered with this 50% shade cloth. Apparently they don't like too much direct sunlight, so by providing the shade cloth it sort of gives them that light, but it's not too fierce. Now this shade cloth has been supported by these two bamboo skewers, which I've just pierced into the side of this polystyrene box. Now this polystyrene box does a really good job of keeping the pots and therefore the roots of the plants nice and cool at a more or less constant temperature, just like in nature. And I will be selling these boxes very soon because they do a remarkable job of allowing you to get the best out of all your carnivorous plants. Now to secure this shade cloth I've just used these, used the end of the bamboo skewers and I've just used a plastic ball lug as a handle and they do a really good job of securing that shade cloth. So let's have a closer look at these plants. Okay, so let's take off this shade cloth and let's reveal these special plants. And here they are. These are Albany pitcher plants, otherwise known as cephalotus. And look how beautiful the traps are, the pitchers. Look at those hairs there, those three groups of hairs around the pitcher and the hairs there on the lid. And look at the ribbing there around the, the mouth of the pitcher. It reminds me of uh, North American, pit, uh, sorry, uh, Nepenthes. They've sort of got that similar arrangement. I suppose all those hairs there sort of prevent insects from crawling on the lid and instead go towards the ribbing there where it's slippery and eventually they fall in. It's the first time I've grown these plants, but I just have fallen in love with them. They're so unique. You've got a red one over here. It's amazing the differences in colour. And there's one over here as well. Now, these plants have got very, very short roots. So it's important when you plant them that you press the medium right up against the roots. I think that's what happened there to this plant over here. I didn't put the medium right up against the roots and what happened it died out. Luckily though these other ones are growing nicely. And you can see that they are quite happy because of the shoots coming out from the sides, those hairy white shoots. Another one over here as well. You can see those shoots there coming out. Now here I'm using 100% peat moss. It's important that you use good quality peat moss. I'm using Canadian peat moss, the Team, T-E-E-M variety, Team brand. Now, as you can see here, I'm using these plastic bags, which I've cut the tops off, and I've secured those bags with masking tape around the pots. I've just used resealable bags here. I'm using 10, uh, sorry, 10 centimeter high pots here. And by having the plastic around the pots, that helps to keep the humidity inside. That helps to prevent the medium from drying out. Apparently winds can dry out the medium. So having the Thank you, as I said, keep some humidity in. And I can tell it's working because you can see the condensation here around the sides of the pot. Of course, once they get established, these plants, I'm going to take this uh, plastic off and the shade cloth and I'll be growing them amongst my beautiful North American pitcher plants. They're a lot more tougher when it comes to direct sunlight and they'll provide the filtered light which these... Albany pitcher plants love. Alright, so let's have a look here at how I've arranged my pots. 
And first of all, I'm not sponsored by McDonald's. As you can see here, I've got this plastic cup. The pot is sitting in the cup. And of course, I've got water in there that's uh, distilled water. And I've got um, wicking material in there. I've got two strands there that's been inserted into the bottom of the pot. That helps to keep the peat moss nice and damp at all times. It's a better way of watering, I think, because what it does is the plants just soak up the water that they need. That prevents overwatering. Apparently, cephalotus don't like to be overwatered. And this arrangement here keeps them nice and happy when it comes to uh, keeping the peat moss nice and damp. Alright everyone, hopefully I've given you some inspiration to grow these amazing plants. I'm going to show you, or well, let you know how they go, how, how they're progressing later on. But uh, so far I'm quite happy, except for that one that died, but that's okay, I've got others growing. So yeah, can't wait to see them when they get established. So until next time everyone, happy growing.